tuples are immutable lists in the end. And for that, I will now create a tuple and a list to show you the differences and similarities between these two data types. Let's start with a user names um, list maybe. And let's say this list should contain one list item surrounded by the square brackets right here. And this could be my name, manual. Let's create the same thing um, with a tuple now. For that, we'll again define a variable name, in this case, usernames tuple. And now I will add the name like that. This would be almost a tuple. There is one important thing missing. I'll come back to that in a few seconds. You could also add parentheses right here, like this and write that. This is optional, though I would recommend to do so because it makes the code a bit more explicit here. With that, we can now actually print our usernames list and also our usernames tuple right here. Or let's maybe print um, the type of these two variables here. And if we now run the code, you can see two interesting things. The first part right here is a list. This worked fine because the square brackets indicates that we have a list right here. But the second variable is still a string. So our parenthesis right here, this optional parenthesis we can use, wasn't enough to tell Python that we have a tuple right here. It will become a tuple though if we add a comma right here after our first item. Though this syntax looks a bit strange at first, you can see that we now created a list and a tuple. So that's the first core thing. Tuples can be created with or without parenthesis, but if you have a tuple containing one single item only, make sure to add the comma after this first item to tell Python that this should be a tuple. For the list, this is not necessary because the square brackets already indicate that this should be a list. Let's add some more names now, maybe Max, um, James, and Harry, like that. And let's also add the same names right here to our tuple. If we now get rid of our type right here and right there and print this, we can see both work kind of in the same way. No big differences here. We can also access list and tuple items the same way by indexing. So if we say we want to access the first list item right here and right there, this works for both. We selected manual in both the tuple and the list. We can also use a concept named slicing to select a range of items inside a list or a tuple. So we can say we want to start at the index of zero, so manual. Then we add a colon and then we define the stop value. This would be the index of two right here. So this one, but important, it starts right here with zero and then it ends with two, but the stop value, so two right here, will be excluded. So we will basically print manual and max right here. Same thing is possible for the tuple. If you run the code, we print manual and max for both the list and the tuple. So selecting list items on tuple items via indexing or slicing works fine. But as tuples are immutable, changing values stored in a tuple doesn't work as it does for lists. For that, let's maybe delete our um, slicing part right here. And let me now change the usernames list, the first item, so max, to Sam maybe. Let's add it right here. And let's now do the same thing for our tuple right here. If I run the code now, you can see already that the IDE already tells me that we have a problem here so that the item assignment is not supported. Nevertheless, let's run the code. And as you can see up here for our list, Sam was changed. So Sam was added, so we don't have Max here anymore, but we have Sam. But for our tuple, this doesn't work. Same thing is true for the methods available for lists and tuples. If we delete that part, now add the dot, we can see we have a lot of different methods available for our list. For example, append to add a list item or pop to remove a list item. If I select append right here and now say I want to add um, Sam at the end now, then I can do this perfectly with my list. But if I would like to do the same thing with the tuple, you can see we only have two methods available, count and index. I will show these methods in a few seconds. Let me just run the code again to show you that Sam was added successfully right here to our list 
for a tuple, we didn't have that option. Now what about these two methods I was referring to? For that, let's simply add the method right here. And let's say we want to have a look at count first, right here. We have to add the parenthesis right here, of course. And now we can count how many times a specific well, value is stored in our tuple. So for example, if I add manual right here, and if I print that, you can see we get back one because manual is available or stored once right here in our tuple. If I would add manual twice at the end and run the code once again, we get back two because manual, well, of course, two times right here in our tuple. We don't need that though, so we can actually delete it once again. The second method we had was index. Index right here, this one. Index basically shows us the index of a specific value, so where it is stored in our tuple. If you run the code, you can see manually stored at the index of zero, whereas James, for example, has the index of two. So these are the two methods we have for our tuples. And with that, we saw already the core difference between a list and a tuple. Lists are mutable, tuples are immutable. Now this brings us to the question, why would I want to use such tuples? And for that, I will comment out this entire code up here and start a new example. Because to understand why tuples can be very useful, I want to introduce a second concept to you. The so-called tuple unpacking or multiple assignment. Tuple unpacking is not necessarily related to tuples only. You can also apply the same concept to lists, for example. I will use it for tuples, though, in this video here. And tuple unpacking or multiple assignment simply allows you to assign multiple values to multiple variables very conveniently. For that, let me create another example, maybe with the user um, data variable right here. And this should be a tuple, so we will create the parenthesis, and this should contain my name, so the username, the age, 31, and maybe um, the gender, which in my case would be male, like that. This is a tuple, we learned about that, and now you can access these values in the tuple via indexing. We saw that already, we can say user data, um, zero. If we print that, you can access manual right here, so my name. This is working fine. But what if you want to assign variable names to these values stored in the tuple? So manual, for example, would be the name variable, 31 could be the age variable, and male could be the gender variable. What you can do, of course, is you can say that um, name could be user data 0. And if you print that name, then you get it back. And you could do the same thing for the remaining values. And this is where multiple assignment comes into play. Because we can now simply say that name, age, and gender are equal to user data. And if I now print the name, I get back the same result, manual. But what happened here? We simply assigned name, so the first variable, to the first value stored inside our user data variable. The second variable, age, was related or assigned to the second value stored inside our tuple and gender right here this variable was assigned to the third value stored inside our tuple so what we did right here is the so-called tuple packing right here so we basically added values to our tuple and what we did right here is the so-called tuple unpacking we assigned variable names to our values stored in the tuple tuple unpacking or multiple assignment is very explicit though this means if I would now add a, a fourth um, value here, for example, it could be something like hobbies, which could be cooking, right? And if I now run the code, we get an error. So we have too many values to unpack right here in our tuple unpacking procedure. Same thing happens if I add too many variables, let's say um, hobbies right here. I also get an error. We have not enough values to unpack because we expect four values. We only get three, so these three values here. So you have to be careful to match the amount of values and the amount of variables right here. There is one other approach though, which makes sure that you, well, can have more values than variable names. So if you, for example, add here again, um, cooking and I don't know, maybe Germany, so the country where I live in, then you can simply add this asterisk right here 
and add a different um, variable, so other, for example, right here. If you do that now and print other right here, then you can see that we don't get an error, but that we assigned the remaining values, so the values which are not covered in these first three variables. So we have the first variable manual, the second age, the third male, and the fourth one with the asterisk right here simply includes all the other values we have right here. So if I would add more values here, this would also be printed and stored inside this variable. Um, we don't need that here. So let's delete that quickly here and right there. So this is tuple unpacking or multiple assignment. And we can't have other anymore. And still we have these two concepts. We have now the tuple with the immutable way of storing values. And we have that tuple unpacking, which allows us to assign multiple values to variables. Let's bring these concepts together now in a final example where we have a little function or a little user interface, you could say. In this interface, I want the user to input his user email which should be an input function, um, which says, um, well, enter your email right here. And we have a second example um, with the user password, like that maybe with a capital P right here. This should now be stored in a function. Let's name it get user data, no arguments needed. Make sure to do the indentation correctly here. And now this function should return a tuple which includes the user input. So we want to um, return two things, user email and user password. We don't have to add parentheses right here. We create a tuple, but we can add these to be a bit more explicit again. What I want to do now is I simply want to say that sign up data is equal to our get user data function right here. And now I want to print our sign up data right there. If we comment out this previous code right here and now run the code, you can see we can enter an email test at test.com maybe password one, two, three. And you can see we print these inputs inside our tuple. And that's great already because with that you see one application area of a tuple because this would be a pretty common use case. The user enters an email and a password to register on your website, for example, and then you can store these data right here with that tuple. So it is immutable. We cannot change the information stored inside the tuple anymore. For example, if I want to access the um, email, so the first value stored in the tuple, and if I want to change the email to test2 at test.com, right here. If I run the code once again, we can enter test at test.com, right? One, two, three. But here we get an error now because we again cannot change the value stored in the tuple. So with that, you have a way to store the email and the password in an immutable way. We can also add our tuple unpacking concept right here, because as you saw, I have to use the index right there to access the user email. And in my case, I know that the email is the first value stored in the tuple, but how would I know that if I don't have this additional information? So for that, I can use tuple unpacking once again to say that email and password are the two values we stored inside our tuple. So email and password is equal to sign up data. And if I now print email, for example, like that, I can refer to it explicitly. And you can see if I enter test at test.com, once again, one, two, three, we get back our email right here stored inside our tuple. And that's it about tuples and tuple unpacking already. As you can see, it's quite easy to use actually. The only thing you have to understand is that tuples are immutable, lists are mutable. And the tuple unpacking or multiple assignment doesn't mean anything more than assigning multiple variable names to multiple values. So if you liked the video, make sure to check out our other content on academind.com or here on the YouTube channel. Also subscribe to the channel if you like what we're doing. And with that, I hope to see you in one of the next videos too. Thanks for watching and bye.